You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. I got me a nice, lovely cup of coffee here, and I'm ready to make some more content for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, Alarm Chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> okay. Again, that hopeful look, and again, I actually feel bad for him. How lonely do you have to be to just want to cuddle someone? But at the same time, I want to. I might not want to admit it, but I've also been lonely these past three weeks, emotionally and physically. Also, I've really liked our short hugs, so a longer one? Trying not to look too eager myself, I sigh and stand up. Amicus's ears immediately perk up in happy surprise. He leans back, legs together, waiting as I walk up to him. Do you... I sit down in his lap, a little awkwardly at first as I wobble around, then finally settle on turning sideways, knees drawn up as I lean my shoulder against his chest. Amicus's paw, Amicus pauses, then wraps his arms around me. Despite the awkward start, I'm amazed at the way at the way I just sort of fit against the curve of his body. His big, furry arms envelop me, and I feel the muscles tighten briefly before relaxing. His soft stomach cushions against my side, making it feel as if I'm leaning against a big, furry but firm waterbed. His chest is broad and thick, propping my head up comfortably as he scoots his butt out a bit to help us better recline. Then he tucks my head under his chin, and just like that, I'm surrounded by his warmth, the cold that had started to bite at my bare skin dissipating immediately. I feel a little thrill in my chest at the feeling of having this wolf, excuse me, so large and powerful, hug and cuddle me so gently. Something about that is so nice. Amicus just holds me in silence for a while, and I feel his paws shift around a bit, like he's kneading through the robe to my through the robe to the skin on my back. Finally, his deep voice rumbles through his chest and against my ear. Is this all right? Yeah, this is, uh, this is fine. I blush, embarrassed at how much I'm enjoying this. Originally, I just wanted to make him feel better, but he was right about this making me, me feel better. Ah, hmm, good coffee. Amicus rubs his chin, down, his chin down against the top of my head, and I hear him inhale. I suppose this isn't a normal thing to do on Earth. Well, it is if you're dating someone. It's not a usual thing with friends, though. Ah. Amicus paws at me a bit more, making those tiny movements as if trying to feel f to feel me as much as possible without being obvious about it. What is uh, dating on your planet? I shrug, though it's hard to do against the wolf's tight embrace. Just uh, asking someone you like out on a date. It basically, it just means that you like the person and you want to know more about them, and dating helps you do that. Ah, sounds fairly casual. So how does one initiate dating? I don't know, j just ask them. Uh, give them flowers if you're old-fashioned, but it, it is pretty casual, honestly. Hmm. Why are you so curious? It's Amicus's turn to shrug. I always want to be careful about your boundaries. It's easier when I understand your culture better. I lean against the wolf, realizing that even though I'd made a complete fool out of myself just half an hour earlier, I feel fine. I kind of hope that this isn't the last time we do something like this. Knowing Amicus, it likely won't be. A few days later, it's a few days later when I'm finally able to hang out with Alex like we planned. Cassius had stopped up his campaigning over the past several days, as his chances of becoming Emperor increased. So did Amicus after his decreased. The difference between that out between the difference being that Alex often found himself going on campaign trips with the White Wolf while Amicus always left me behind. I think Amicus had picked up on the fact that I don't like being out in front of so many people after the whole dance incident. Still, he promises me that when he wins the next trial, we'll go out to the city to celebrate. For now, though, I'm happy to stay in the gardens with Alex, enjoying a quiet midday meal as we both talk and sip our tea. Honestly, they should they should have us redo the dance if your lingua wasn't translating. Was yours? Well, no, but I knew it wouldn't. Wolves never intend for their lyrics to translate over the lingua because it ruins the howl, which they see to be the whole point of singing. Huh. I could understand Amicus overlooking that, though. Most wolves never see another sibling species in person in their entire lives. Well, it's over now. On the debate thing, they're gonna do... Uh, on to the debate thing they're gonna do next. <sighs> oh, yes. Cassie's have been training with the best rhetorician... Retori rhetorician. The best rhetorician on the moon. Marcus Manius. I notice that he puts a bit of emphasis on the name, and I look over at him. Alex sips at his tea daintily, watching the fountain lazily. 
He's offered Cassius many tips on convincing the Triumvirates. Very useful tips, actually. Is Amicus doing anything similar? I realize that Alex is offering me information on what Cassius is doing to prepare for the trial. At least I think he is. Whether that's the case or not, I try to remember the name of the, of the rhetoric guy, knowing that I should tell Amicus later. I'm not really sure. Uh, he hasn't told me all that much about what he's doing, but hopefully it's something similar. Well, I recommend he study the Triumvirates in their cities, if only to find the best way to convince them during the second trial. Yep, definitely offering me information. Thing is, after seeing the way he and Cassius interacted, I wonder if I can fully trust him. You know, Cassius was saying something earlier while I was serving him about a week ago. Did you know that he has plans to get rid of the Triumvirates? Alex's eyes widened for a moment. Oh, really? Hmm, I wonder why. Something about it being easier to rule directly rather than through elected officials? Well, that's some radical thinking, isn't it? That's what Virginia said. Well, she always has been rather reasonable, honestly. Alex leans in, lowering his voice. I'd rather she become the Empress, but unfortunately, the wolves don't allow females to hold positions of much authority, so her chances at the throne are nil. Alex's eyes suddenly widen as he looks over my shoulder. I raise my eyebrows and look back to see Nefru making his way towards us. I turn around to see Alex looking down toward the ground, his tail lashing around before he holds it in his lap. The jackal stops to stand in front of us. Without a word, he delicately takes one of Alex's, Alex's paws and bows low to kiss it. Alex raises his other paw to his mouth, blushing furiously. Meanwhile, Neferu just nods at me. <laughs> Good day, Alex and Killian. How is your midday meal? Alex still has his paw to his mouth, so I answer for him. It's okay. How are you? It's blended. I notice then that he's carrying a bottle in his paw, the glass glinting in the sunlight with his every move. I was just taking a walk through the gardens this morning when I happened across a shockingly large spider that skittered across the ground at my paws. Nefru sweeps his paw in front of himself as if showing where the spider ran. I can't help but wonder if I'm in danger here. Alex finally speaks up then, squeaking with the first syllable. No, they're, they're harmless. Their venom is very mild. Ah, well that's a relief to hear, Alex. On my own planet, I'd, I'd often have to shake my loincloths up before wearing them in case of scorpions. Oh, really? That's terrifying! It certainly can be, but it's something to get used to. Alex and Nefru smile at each other for a moment, and I frown at the cat, wondering what the hell he's doing. Oh yes, I came to give you this. Nefru leans down and holds out the glass bottle, and now I see it's filled with a honey-colored liquid that sloshes lazily in the bottle. The Buddha seed oil, I promised. Much better for the fur than the adastrin oil they have for us. Alex reaches out and takes the bottle, bl blushing again. Thank you, Nefru. I I'll use it first thing tomorrow. I'll see you again tomorrow to make sure you do. The jackal winks, and I think I hear Alex make a strangled noise in his throat. In the meantime, would you like to take a walk with me? Uh, oh, I... Nefru once again extends a paw. Alex coughs awkwardly before reaching out to take it. Wonderful. You're always such great company. Would you like to join us as well, Killian? Think back on what had happened in the baths. Uh, no thanks. In that case, I'll see you around the palace. Yeah, we'll see you, Killian. Nefru offers his arm to the cat, and just like that, they're off into the gardens, disappearing around the many bushes lining the, the, lining the footpaths. I stare after them, a bit confused. It's still unclear on what exactly the jackal is doing. I'm also reminded that I need to ask Alex about why the hell he told Nefru about my intelligence. The only problem is, I don't know how to do that without seeming suspicious. Technically, there isn't a reason why it's supposed to be a secret, and I feel like bringing it up will only give the cat reason to dig more deeply. As I'm wondering all this, I notice a shape in the bushes near the ones that Alex and Nefru disappeared behind. Oh, another sip of that delicious coffee. I see a flash of red, maybe an elbow poking out. What the? Amicus? I yell in his direction, I see the wolf jump, suddenly coming out from behind his cover. Yes, I was just having a look at the roses. The wolf walks toward me, his paws behind his back. I raise an eyebrow at him. Were you spying on us? Were you trying to avoid Nefru or something? Amicus ignores me this time. How was your day, Killian? Um, okay. I try to look around the wolf's side at whatever he's hiding behind his back, but he turns accordingly to keep it obscured. What are you doing? Well, Amicus takes a deep breath, and I feel myself starting to get nervous. He goes down to one knee. Killian, over the past few weeks, I've come to enjoy your company immensely. My mouth drops. And over the past few weeks, I've come to realize that we share so much in common in terms of our goals and desires. Amicus gives me a coy smile at that. What are you... So I decided that I should take the next step, to make you feel more welcome and to show you how much I appreciate your kindness and understanding. The wolf suddenly swings his paws to his front, revealing what he'd been hiding. 
It's a bouquet of purple flowers, lavenders to be exact, along with several smaller white flowers sprinkled into the mix. Killian, will you date me? I stare at the wolf, still taking in the presentation he'd just given me. My mouth still hangs open and I make a few uh sounds as I try to form a coherent sentence to respond in my mind. Uh, I probably messed that up, huh? Well, hopefully the message came across clearly. What do you think? I... I'm stunned. And that's good? Amicus, what is this? I did something wrong, didn't I? Well, I mean, did you mean to do it? The whole thing is crazy, but Amicus's demeanor doesn't really match with the proposal he just made. Did I mean to that? Did I... did I mean to ask you out on a date? Well, yeah, did you? Yes. Now the wolf is really fidgeting, tugging at his cape nervously as he lowers the bouquet to hang limply at his side. I have an odd butterflies in the stomach feeling that won't seem to go away. I don't know what it means, but I try to ignore it. The wolf suddenly deflates, looking dejected. Did I pick up the incorrect meaning? I clear my throat, trying to gather my wits. What, uh, do you, what, uh, do you think dating is? Well, what you told me, it's a relationship status that enables you to become closer. Learn more about each other, along with normalizing physical intimacy. Well, he seems to have it down for the most part. The part that I'm having trouble with, though... Well, people that date also tend to have, I guess, feelings for each other? Well, yes, I have very friendly feelings towards you. And I want to make you more comfortable around me, especially when it comes to physical intimacy. Isn't that the point of dating? I sigh, realizing I hadn't explained it well enough, but then I hadn't realized that Amicus was planning to do this either. Well, usually people don't do it unless they love each other. My voice gets quieter and quieter over the course of the sentence until Amicus has to poke his ears forward to hear. Love? Yeah. Oh! Amicus stands there for a moment before the insides of his ears turn bright red. You said it was casual! The wolf raises his voice, the sudden increase in volume making me jump. Well, it is! I mean, you don't necessarily have to be in love to date, but the intention is usually to find love. Dear gods, was your intention just to humiliate me, humiliate me after the dance? What the hell are you talking about? How was I supposed to know you were planning this? I think me asking those questions had made it fairly obvious. You assume way too much. Clearly. Wolf tosses the bouquet to the side, letting it land on the bench before it rolls off to the ground. Amicus slumps onto the bench next to me, his ears still red. I let him grumble to himself for a minute or two, wanting to, him to, wanting to let him cool off from the initial embarrassment... Ah, oh, coffee done. All right. Then I reach up to rest a hand on his broad shoulder. Sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Besides, how are you supposed to know? It's an earth thing. Amicus waves a paw. It's fine. Like you said, I assume too much. I lean over to pick up the bouquet, seeing how the flowers just kind of looked bunched together. You make this yourself? Well, yes. The garden has many flowers. It smells like you. It, yes. It looks good. Thank you. I sit quietly for a few more minutes as I pretend to examine all the flowers in the bouquet. So, it's either friendship or love with humans. No physical intimacy unless you're bound to fall in love. What do you mean? Like this dating culture you have. You were interested in giving me that sexual favor. Does that mean you're also interested in love with me as well? I blush. Well, not exactly. Didn't you say, didn't you say dating allows for more intimacy? But dating is also, ooh, excuse me, meant to look for love? I sigh and set the bouquet aside. Things are changing, becoming more casual. I say the word carefully, and Amicus snorts. But I guess the term you might be looking for is friends with benefits. Benefits? Friends that have sex, basically. Ah, I see. We haven't, e we haven't even done that, though. No, but I'm not going to make you date me just to get a hand job. <laughs> Amicus scratches behind his head before looking my way again. Once again, I find myself feeling bad for him. Listen, if we weren't having this whole... Lowering my voice... Illegal space adventure, I might say yes. What? Really? I said might. Oh, really? I think you're missing a key word to hear. I think I understand. I find myself turning red again, wishing I'd just kept my mouth shut. Well, maybe I might as well. Well, you already asked. Without knowing the full meaning. I try to think of something else to change the subject, knowing that my blush is clear as day to the wolf and that he's very much enjoying it. Anyway, Alexios told me that Cassius was training under a rhetoric person, a um, Marcus Manliest? <laughs> Amicus suddenly frowns. Marcus Manius? Really? I think that's what he said. Damn. Amicus's tone is that of awe. Is that bad? It is simply surprising. He's the most famous at rhetorician rhetorician there is. 
Should I be worried? No, in fact, now that you've told me, I'm in much better shape. I now have an idea of what style he might use, so that will make it easier to counter his points. If you're sure. Of course. Now come to my room to help me practice, just to make cer extra certain I will win. We get up and walk back to the palace of the gardens, leaving the bouquet of flowers behind on the bench. Amicus seems to have gotten over his embarrassment about the whole incident pretty quickly. It's just like him to be able to do that, actually. In fact, in fact, we're laughing and talking just as easily as we always have. The wolf nudging me every few minutes to punctuate something he says, each one causing me to stumble. Anyway, Cass tends to stutter over his words in front of large crowds. Not much of a rhetorician can not much a rhetorician can do about that. The wolf reaches out a paw, pressing it pressing into the black square. Besides, what exactly is he? Oh, well, hello there. Amicus and I stare in surprise as Cassius stares back at us with what looks like even more surprise. And his eyes narrow. Excuse me. He tries to move around us, but Amicus blocks his way, growling. What the hell are you doing in here, Amic Cassius? Amicus seems to reserve his actual yelling only for Cassius, so it makes me jump when I hear it. Cassius collects himself quickly despite Amicus's intimidating snarls. Not much of your business, is it? If you're in my room, then it is my business. What are you doing? The wolf starts to advance on Cassia, stopping just feet away. Move, Amicus, otherwise I'm calling Cato. Amicus eyes Cassia closely, then finally pulls back, folding his arms. Snipping around to find something that, that might give you a chance in the trial? I can tell you now that you'll be coming up short. Obviously, you've nothing to offer to help me win. Then why come here? Cassius ignores the other wolf, walking past Amicus before passing by me. He turns, the, he, then turn, he turns then, and you know, I shouldn't be worried after the pitiable display and you, display you and your pet put on. He turns to me and I can't help but frown at him. As stupid as he is ugly. I know that Cassius is trying to get under Amicus's skin. He knows that he cares about me. But as Cassius reaches out to brush my, brush my chin with a paw, I can't stop myself from batting it away. Cassius' eyes widen then and I see his paw draw back. I flinch, but immediately Amicus is there, reaching out to grab Cassius by his cape. The smaller wolf is pulled back from me, but Amicus doesn't stop there. As Cassius stumbles past Amicus, the bigger wolf swings his paw, smacking Cassius square in the nose. Cassius immediately goes down on his ass, at which point I hear another sound. Amicus and I stare at the smaller wolf as he sits there, stunned. He suddenly scrambles up to his feet, a paw to his rear. Ow! Shit! Amicus, you bastard tail-raising lover of ass! I take a step back as Cassius practically sprays blood from his nose. Amicus pulls me to his side, eyes narrowed, but I can feel his heart hammering against my shoulder. I'll throw you both in the dungeon for that. I'll have him... <clears throat> Let me see if I can do that much better. I'll throw you both in the dungeon for that. I'll have him executed while I'm emperor. I see tears starting to spill out of Cassius' eyes before he turns and stumbles out of the room, his tail hanging limply to the side. Amicus and I stand there for a long time after he leaves, a silence almost oppressive after the loud fight. A few minutes later, Amicus is flat on his stomach, looking under his bed as he mumbles something under his breath. I stand awkwardly off to the side, watching as he sweeps a paw underneath as if feeling for something. What are you doing? Amicus grunts as he gets to his knees, then stands up, looking up at the ceiling as he turns in a slow circle. Ooh, man, that was intense. All right, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's a uh, very intense, uh, unexpectedly intense, intense uh, episode of uh, Ad Astra. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!